In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply for the USMLE ACFMG identification number, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to study for the USMLE step one. So the first thing you want to do is just Google uh, apply for USMLE ACFMG ID online application, and you want to click on the first result that, that, that comes up here. I really advise you to read all of the text that's put out here. Um, and then you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and you have to accept these two terms over here. And then you just click on next. You are only allowed to use Latin alphabet. So if you have a foreign name, you have to figure out how to write it in English. So the next thing you have to fill out over here is your first name, your last name, your date of birth. And it's really important to understand that they're asking for your birth country, not your country of your current residence where you live or study. Fields such as previously issued USMLE ID number or your US social security number, I mean, you can just leave them empty if you don't have this information and you never had these numbers to begin with. And then the next thing you have to do is insert information about your med school where you currently study or the med school you graduated from. Now, this last section you have to fill out your contact information includes two things that I'd like to highlight over here. First thing I'd like to highlight is your country of residence. Now, this is really important for international students. Your country of residence is neither your country of birth nor the country of your citizenship. It's basically the country in which you currently live in, work or study. Then over here, you have to insert your full address. And after that, this is the second thing I wanted to highlight is don't insert your email from your university. Why? Because once you graduate and you don't have access to that email anymore, how are you going to access your ECFMG account? So it's really important to insert your personal email over here, the one to which you always have an access and you always will have an access. After that, you have to just certify that the information in this ECFMG application is true and accurate. And you can do that by clicking here and then you can just submit the application. After this, you're going to receive an email within seven to 10 days. And this email will include your USMLE ID number and a password to log in into your ECFMG account. After that, you're going to have to pay a small fee and complete the 186 form using notary cam. Now this will be explained in the next video, but first let's talk about how to prepare for the USMLE step one. Now everybody agrees first aid book and UWorld question bank are a must. These two resources offer you a comprehensive approach and they cover pretty much every topic that's important for the USMLE step one. They however require active studying focus, effort, and time in order to be properly mastered. But what about all the time during your day when you're not actively at your desk and you're not studying first aid and new world? Well, then if you're on the road in a bus, if you're out there with your friends and you feel bored and you have five or 10 minutes free, you can use that time as well. Humans study not only by reading, but also by watching and listening. So if you have only five to 10 minutes free, that time can be used as well. For that, we publish five to 10 minutes long videos. And the first type of videos we publish are video lessons about different diseases that are asked in the USMLE exams. The second type of content we publish are symptoms that discuss differential diagnosis. Basically, we have a hallmark symptom and then we go around it and we try to explain all the diseases that could be causing that symptom or a combination of symptoms. But what if you're in a rush and you have only one minute free? Well, that time can be used as well to study for your USMLE exams. We publish videos that are 60 seconds long, and there we explain something that's important for the exam. 
and we ask you at the end of the video to try to recall that information. It's really important to understand that our videos are not a replacement for first aid and U world, but we have students telling us that they are extremely helpful and you will not be notified about our new videos unless you subscribe and unless you click that bell button and then choose all because for some reason a lot of people subscribe to our channel, but YouTube simply decides not to send them notifications about our new videos. That's just the way YouTube works these days. At the end, good luck with your USMLE exams.